How has training been for you leading up to this fight? Well, you know, like I had like probably the longest camp out of uh, all the fighters for this like uh, second round of the regular season since uh, I didn't get to fight in the first round, right? I had like an issue with my weight. It wasn't even with the weight, actually. I made like 206.4. So didn't make weight, but it was close enough, like based on like on how like much I had to cut. And uh, the thing is, since some guys actually end up fighting, they took some days off or whatever, got hurt or, you know, they took like one day off. And for me, it was more about like, well, as soon as I was healthy and uh, I just went back in the gym right away, which was literally the following Monday. So based on a little bit of a camp that I had for the last one, which was a short notice call, plus what I had, which was seven weeks for this one, like I had like 11 weeks to train. So it's been pretty good. The weight's down, you know, like that was the biggest issue when I got called for the first uh, the first round of the regular season. I was uh, four weeks out and I was weighing 258. I could have gone heavyweight. There was a spot for me. And uh, I made the cut all the way down to 34. And uh, from 234, I, I tried to cut wide and it didn't work out so well for me. And now, like, I've been walking around like 218, 220. So that's like the health, healthiest way that it can be. My next question for you is there's obviously different opinions on this, but what do you think is the best part to focus on on the training camp? Well, here, here's the thing like, uh, the, the last one was like, was short based on like what I could train at home like with my team at Extreme Couture uh, when I got the call four weeks from the fight and you had like the 17 days quarantine so like I barely trained with my training partners in that one and uh, plus the whole weight issue so for me like the last one I was focused on making weight you know it's really hard for you to strategize like a fight it's really hard for you to focus on your, on your opponent like what are you going to do in a fight if you just like, all you can think like 24 seven is about making weight on this one is different. You know, um, I found out like who I was fighting, I would say like maybe two weeks after the last event, something like that. And then, um, it was different, you know, like I was able to like focus on nothing but the fight and, uh, training has been great. You know, like I'll work, of course I'm fighting another Jiu Jitsu guy, but who, who's also like dangerous with his hands. I've known calls for a long time, like not just from Jiu Jitsu world, but uh, I was one of the assistant coaches when he was an ultimate fighter. And uh, I've been watching this guy fighting since, like, you know, he started his career. So I know that he can be dangerous, not just on the ground, but also, like, in strike with his striking. So I was able to prepare myself, like, to fight a guy like him. Thank you. Good luck on Thursday. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, this is Max Gowen from the Going Live podcast. Just have a quick question. Obviously, you're a very accomplished jujitsu player. I was just wondering if you you see this this fight going to the ground immediately, or do you want to kind of keep it on the feet? Uh, it's hard to say. Like you know, you want to keep it on the feet. Like everybody knows that. Like you know, what I'm a uh, what I'm better at. It's uh, there's no brainer. You know, like I'm a jujitsu guy fighting another jujitsu guy. I would say that's the first time that I'm fighting a guy as skilled as him on the ground. But it's still like I should trust my game. I feel like, you know, if it goes to the ground, I feel like I will still have an advantage, even though it's not going to be a bigger gap like having against most guys. Um, but it's hard to say, like, how it's going to play out. We never know. We really never know. Uh, I just say, like, you know, he actually has, like, pretty good strength for a jiu-jitsu guy. And uh, so I do have to respect that. But you never know. Maybe he wants to, like, you know, keep it standing. And maybe could I want to keep it standing too? Why not? You know, that's. I feel like that's more – on a part of the game that both of us would try out, like, our luck, you know? While, like, if you take to the ground, that's our game. That's where both of us feel, like, the most comfortable. So, we we'll see. Awesome. Thanks so much, and good luck on Thursday. Thank you. So, Vinny? Hey, how's it going, man? Not too bad, man. My question for you is, you know, with the quarantine kind of coming to an end, but COVID is still an issue, how has it made you kind of rethink how you prepare yourself for each fight? I had not hasn't made any difference to me. I got COVID in December, and uh, I try to believe in science, like, and you know, my immunity, and I believe that I'm not going to catch this thing again. So it hasn't stopped me from training. It has not stopped me from exposing myself to, like, you know, any, anything or anybody. So it hasn't changed anything. I haven't stopped, like, my regular routine just because of that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, Vinny, this is Tariq from the Havoc Hour. So, obviously, as we mentioned, you didn't get to fight the last go-around. And so now, in this week, you got one shot to try to make it into the playoffs. If it doesn't happen, you know, 
for you being active since 2006, how much do you feel like you have left in the sport? Well, you know, like, as far as, like, well, since I've been active since 2006, uh, I would say that I started to have, like, really tough fights as far as, like, taking punishment with towards, like, my last, like, three years. On my fight against Miliano, it was a lot of, like, you know, it was a, it was a hard fight uh, against Sean in the championship for PFL. That was a hard fight. But besides that, like, you know, most of my fights have been, like, a lot of, like, grappling exchanges, and uh, there's not a lot of damage to, like, taken or done. So I feel like as long as my body can take it, like, you know, I can do, like, another year or two. It's not based on, like, oh, do you just have one year or two? It's more based on, like, my uh, desire of being, like, in a sport. I don't want to be one of those guys that's fighting until, like, 41, 42, 43. And I'm about to turn 37, like, in, uh, in a few weeks. So it's just, like, a plan, you know. It's not like I couldn't do it. I feel like I could do it as long as, like, I don't have, like, any major injury, like, you know, from this point on. I feel like I could do it, but uh, it's just I don't want to. I love what I do, you know. If uh, if it wasn't one of those things that could do dang, damage to your brain, like and things like that, I would have probably do it for a long, long time. But uh, I want to enjoy like time with my family, with my kids, and uh, I feel like that's a smart thing to be doing with like you know, like when you mid forties, like some guys do. Um, what's the next question? <laughs> Uh, awesome. Thanks a lot. Good luck this week. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Vinny. This is Alger from the fight. Hello. So my question for you, um, you, like you see, you're going against another uh, highlight bone jiu and both of you guys are very high-level grapplers. So I'll let you just declare myself. Uh, the ground is how much going to be about uh, who gets the position, pulling the fight to, uh, to pretty much secure the victory. I, I could hear her skirting off a little bit. Like, I could yeah, understand your question. Jake Foley from Overtime Heroics. Thanks for being here, Vinny. Thank you. Since your, since your last MMA fight, we have seen you compete against some of the best jujitsu practitioners in the world. What was that experience like, and do you think it'll benefit your return to the octagon? Uh, I don't know if it benefits. So to be honest, it's uh, the only reason I compete like it's just, again, it's, it is to stay active. So that's to get a journal of competition. But it's a completely different mindset that I have like for fighting and uh, for jiu-jitsu matches. Like I, to be honest, like for those matches, like sometimes I, I would train like once, twice a week, like ju pure jiu-jitsu. Wow, these guys are training jiu-jitsu like twice a day. When it comes down to fighting, I'm like in the gym like three times a day and there's not a single day off. I would say my day off, I train once or twice, and that would be on a Sunday. So it's a different approach. Uh, mindsets and definitely not the same, you know. I feel like there's a lot more, like, awareness for the danger of going to a fight than there is for uh, a jiu-jitsu match. Even though, like, the, one of the last ones I had my uh, ankle broken, you know, it didn't phase me much. Like, three months later, I was competing again. It's not even like I was, you know, out of the game. And uh, then the same deal. Like, how, three months later, I was competing again, and I wasn't training as much. It's a different mindset. It's good to stay busy in a way, especially like mentally, you know, feel like you're going to get into a competition, but you can't compare those, uh, the two sports. Thanks for your time. Good luck on Thursday. Thank you. Breeze. Hey, Vinny, it's Breeze with the MMA Breeze. Just wanted to ask, what's your favorite submission to hit in a live competition? And what submissions could, or type of submission do you, could you see yourself pulling off in this matchup? Uh, it's hard to call a submission against like another guy that who's also a specialist. You know, if you're giving him a striker, I would just call like a flying armbar, flying triangle, or something like that, which I've done it like before in uh, in MMA fights. But uh, I'm going against a guy who I have to respect. Uh, I respect his game, of course. Uh, I would say like tracking record. I'm more of a like a uh, an armbar guy. Uh, we never know. And you know, I've trained with uh, with Carlos before, Carlos Junior before. And uh, I know where how I can get them. I know that's not easy. Uh, you're gonna have to like just you know wait until Thursday to see. Right on. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. Tanai. Hey, Vinny. This is Tanai from MMA Island. How's it going, man? I'm doing pretty good. Um, you're obviously going against a legend of the sport, someone you look up to and have worked with. How are your emotions going into this fight? Uh, there's no emotion. And to be honest, I don't even know like if I look up to. Like, you know, I've been around for a little longer than him. <laughs> uh, a little more accomplished than him, too, when it comes down to, like, you know, 
uh, grappling, but yeah, it's uh, it's it, here's the thing. Uh, it's a guy that I respect definitely more than any other guy in the division when it comes down to ground game. He's uh, just as accomplished, like you know. Um, he is a guy that I've watched, like you know, coming up, like in his MMA career. Uh, I did follow a little bit of his just career, and uh, it is a different like approach for this fight. But uh, I don't think I don't as far as experience, like, and you know, if you count all my fights, uh, even like including the ones the ones in the Ultimate Fighter, that's like my thirty sixth fight. So I have a more experience too. So for me, it's just like it's like fighting anybody else. Of course, a little bit of a different approach since I'm fighting a guy that's better than. Uh, most guys that I've fought on the ground, but uh, doesn't change much. And how does it feel going up against a fellow Brazilian? That that is the the, the weird part. Because like here's the thing, you know, like uh, especially with Carlos, that's a guy that I've known. Like you know, I, I met him. Like I spent like some time with him in Brazil uh, when I was uh, assistant coach from Tough. And uh, you know, we end up like developing like a level of friendship. So when you get booked. Especially against other Brazilians, Brazilians, you know, they're like they like to be like super tight and all that. It feels really odd, you know. When I even like this week when I got to the hotel like last week, uh, he came up to me. He's like, "Hey, man, this messed up." Like, you know, I even talked to you know Ali, that's our manager. He's like, you know, they could have done like a, could have the different matchup. Like, I, they didn't have to be us. And I'm like, I agree, but now it's already done. Like, you know, let's not focus so much on that. You know, I try not to get into emotion. That's the main thing for me. You know, like he's. Uh, He's somebody that I like. Uh, I'm not close friends with him. So for me, going against another Brazilian is just a guy like going against anybody else and any other like nationality. Thank you so much, Vinny. Good luck on Thursday. Thank you. This is Ronald E. Smith. My question for you is just just like everybody else in 2020, we all, we all had to be shut down, locked up, and a lot of things had to just be put on hold. Just for yourself, what did you learn about yourself during that time period where there wasn't anything going on? Uh, yeah, that was awful, actually, for me. Uh, I didn't fall much into the – I was not like, – again, like I feel like people that have like you know, their health issues, they do have to take care of themselves. They have to – especially if they're at risk, they should avoid like all kind of like scenarios, not to get sick and all that. For me, being healthy, it's like you know I didn't try to overprotect myself, so I tried to do as much as I could. But at the same time, like with the lack of competition, I feel like that was the biggest, biggest like thing for me. I've been a competitor since I've been like since I was like 14 years old. So not having like fights, not having a contract, that's what made him balloon up. That's why I went up like to almost like 260 pounds. You know, the combination of pandemic, not having PFL, not having a contract to fight. So that was the biggest thing for me. Like that was the heaviest I've ever been, and that's the only thing that the, the pandemic interfered in my life was like my, you know, my fatness. <laughs> but besides that, like, you know, like I got COVID, it wasn't bad. I didn't have symptoms. My whole family didn't have symptoms. They didn't have symptoms. So it was uh, overall, like, wasn't that bad. And how are you, and what changes did you have to do in training since some gyms were closed? Did you have to do anything like work out in your houses or any advanced workouts? Uh, I do have like a full, like, uh, gym set up at, uh, at my house. And uh, and then again, like the, in, in Nevada, like you know, things didn't close completely. You know, you see, like the gym was still open, extreme couture. You know, like little like small adjustments that was made and they were made. Like you know, oh, I gotta walk into the gym with a mask. Like, but when you train, you can remove the mask. So it didn't change much. It was more the mindset that was. It was just weird knowing that you know events were not gonna happen, no contract. And at that time, it wasn't even I was not uh, resigned with PFL, so it was almost like, well, I don't have a contract period right now, so like, I can whatever I want. I don't have to train as much, and that's that was a little bit of a problem. So mentally, it wasn't that good, but overall, you know, I can't I can't really complain. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. This is Carlos from the Dreaming Podcast. My question is for you. Obviously, you said before you were an assistant coach on Tough when Antonio Carlos Jr. was there. When you coached him on Tough, did you knew? Did you know he was going to be something special? Uh, he was, as a matter of fact, I was with Che, all right? Like, and he was in Vanderlei's team. That was the guy that we won in our team. You know, really nice dude, like, you know, great potential. Like, uh, at that time, he was really accomplished, like, in jiu-jitsu. So we wanted him to be, like, in our team. And uh, we figured, you know, like he was, he was my pick to, to win the, the 
you know, that season and he won even in a heavyweight, which is not even like close to his weight class. But uh, I knew he was going to be good. The guy, he, he's talented and you know, all. Like, and uh, again, for a jiu-jitsu guy, he was shown like, to have like, good boxing. Even in that season, I think he won two of the fights in the, in the season by like, TKO or something like that. And uh, he looked good. It was not like, oh, yeah, I got lucky. He, like, no, he looked good doing it. And uh, we knew he was going to do well. My next question for you is, obviously, you guys are friends. But if there was something you could help him improve on, what do you think that would be? Well, you know, uh, if I could help him, I would beat him on Thursday. That's going to be a lesson. So that's like the best way to help somebody, right? Maybe he's going to have to make some adjustments from now on. Think about that. No better way to help somebody.